I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will tell of your name to my kin. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. As we recall year by year the mysteries by which, through the restoration of its original dignity, human nature has received the hope of rising again, we earnestly beseech your mercy, Lord, that we may celebrate in faith, we may possess an unending love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The high priest rose up and all his companions, that is, the party of the Sadducees, and filled with jealousy, laid hands on the apostles and put them in the public jail. But during the night, the angel of the Lord opened the doors of the prison, led them out, and said, Go and take your place in the temple area and tell the people everything about this life. When they heard this, they went to the temple early in the morning and taught. When the high priest and his companions arrived, they convened the Sanhedrin. The full senate of the children of Israel sent to the jail to have them brought in. But the court officers who went did not find them in the prison, so they came back and reported. We found the jail securely locked and the guards stationed outside the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. When the captain of the temple guard and the chief priests heard this report, they were at a loss about them as to what this would come to. Then someone came in and reported to them, the men whom you put in prison are in the temple area and are teaching the people. Then the captain and the court officers went and brought them, but without force, because they were afraid of being stoned by the people. The word of the Lord. The Lord hears the cries of the poor. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly shall he will hear and be glad. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him that he may that you may be radiant with joy and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress he saved him. The angel Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Bless the man who takes refuge in him. Alleluia, alleluia. Hallelujah. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but might have eternal life. For 
God did not send his son to the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he's not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the truth. The light came into the world. The people preferred darkness to light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light, so his work may not be exposed. The truth comes to the light, so his works may be clearly seen as done by God. The Gospel of the Lord. All right, my brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome again this morning to Padre Pio Chapel. I am Father Stephen Imbrato of Life Ministries U.S.org. Uh, very, very happy and honored actually to celebrate Mass each and every single day here. Now I want to give everyone here a heads up uh, that very possibly uh, by the end of this week, definitely by next week, we're going to be changing the time of this Mass. So the Mass is normally 10 o'clock. Eastern Time, U.S. Eastern Time, and I know you all all over the globe. We're going to change this mass to New Time, My Time, My Time, which is two o'clock Eastern Time, which is an evening mass for many of you that are following mass from Europe and uh, uh, other parts of here. So I hope that's not a convenience. So when I have celebrated mass later, sometimes. More people watch, uh, other people, times less people watch. Uh, I hope that you are able to uh, attend during this COVID-19 crisis, the only sacrifice of the Mass someplace, at least live stream. But I just want to give you a heads up tomorrow, definitely, and most likely on Friday, uh, the Mass will be at this same time, 10 o'clock Eastern time. Uh, and I will keep you abreast of that situation for those of you who attend this Mass, so live streaming uh, on uh, Facebook Live on my mother, Mary. Now, today's readings, uh, I almost have to chuckle at the first reading. Uh, I, I mean, you know, I mean, think about that. Uh, the uh, buffoonery of the, all the leaders of the Jews, I mean, you're talking about the chief priest, the Sadducees. The Pharisees was distinctly different. I think the reason the Pharisees are not a part of this, this anger towards the apostles is because why? The apostles are preaching about the resurrection of the dead, that Jesus rose from the dead. And so the Pharisees would have a hard time complaining about that if they actually believe in the resurrection of the dead, that they didn't believe Jesus was the Messiah. I believed in the resurrection of the dead. You remember that Paul at one point in time pits the Sadducees against the Pharisees by raising that particular point. The Sadducees not, not in resurrection of the dead, so they're even more appalled at the apostles. So they must be the first ones to come to the chief priest uh, and the Sanhedrin, the, uh, the uh, court, the Senate, so to speak, that rules over the, the Jewish people from a religious standpoint. The first ones, not that the Pharisees don't have any problem with the Jews. They, I mean, with the apostles, they absolutely have plenty of problems with the apostles because they are preaching Christ crucified and who crucified Jesus. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, right? I mean, everybody was a part of but now they see all these people coming and getting baptized and, and entering into Christianity, and it's the Sadducees that want to push the envelope because it just annoys them to know to hear about resurrection of the dead because they don't believe in resurrection of the dead. Okay, so that being said, I mean, I, I just, I picture this, right? I, I picture this. They throw the apostles to jail. They show up the next morning. This big court case. They got everybody there. They sent for the apostles. Doors are locked. The guards are there. No apostles. 
right? And they're well, where are these guys? Where are they? Then all of a sudden somebody comes in and says, well, they're in the temple area where they were when you were with them the first time, preaching as if no regard for anything to Sanhedrin, the leaders of the Jews, no regard, no regard. And uh, I, I find this uh, humorous. Now, at the same time, it's sad. It's very sad because and whether this is peer pressure or or what it is, not one, not one stands up. And of course, we do know from the Acts of the Apostles that there was one who stood up and said, look, if, if you oppose these people, these apostles, these disciples of Christ, you might find yourself uh, opposing God. Uh, now that caused the the leaders of the Jews to back down temporarily, and I'm sure they weren't, weren't happy with being confronted with that. Uh, but you know, for the most part, you know, they are in lockstep. They are in unison in terms of uh, uh, being against the apostles and not even asking simple questions. I mean, you would think that one would say, "Well, well wait a second. How did they get out of jail? How did they get out of jail? How did Peter right, cure this paralytic? How How is this stuff happening? I mean, they didn't ask the questions when, when Jesus was, was performing all these miracles, when Jesus was raising people from the dead. Um, uh, and, and, and they're not asking questions about people, well, did you see Jesus? Did you see Jesus after he rose? people saw Jesus. I mean, let's let's face it, not just the apostles and the immediate disciples, hundreds of people saw Jesus. Scripture tells us, Josephus tells us that, right? The uh, Roman historian. The, um, and so there's this hardness of heart, right? This darkness that the Pharisees, I know the all the Pharisees, yes, the Sadducees, the leaders of the Jews, the Sanhedrin, this hardness of heart that they don't even want to see. They're not even going to ask the questions. Right? This is a prevalent theme in all of Scripture that we really need to understand. This distinction in Scripture between two types of sinners. Those sinners who had recognized their sin and come to conversion, and the sinners who have so intellectualized their sin that they cannot bring themselves to accept the fact that they're sinful. And this is, of course, most evident in the parable of the uh, prodigal son and the older brother, right? The prodigal son being the one who is like, uh, 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 tax collector, Mary Magdalene, uh, all of these who, uh, because of Jesus, recognized their sin and, and uh, came to conversion. Uh, because of the loving father, truly it was the younger son who recognized his sin and came and asked for mercy of the father. But the older son, who was the manifestation of the Pharisees, the leaders of the Jews, I could not recognize his pridefulness, and we don't know if he ever uh, came to conversion. And so this is a prevalent theme throughout the Gospels, throughout the Scripture um, and, and the New Testament, and, and it relates to what? What we hear in the Gospels, that Jesus uh, came into the world, sent by the Father for the world's salvation, not to condemn, not to condemn anyone, but, and we see in our Christian brothers and sisters who are not Catholic, of course, this is their favorite, this is their favorite verse. God so loved the world that he gave up his only son so that everybody who believes in him might not might be just, just believe. Just believe. That's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. But if you read the entire, and the church and its wisdom gives us the entire passage, how is that belief manifest? Because if you ask the Pharisees, the scribes, the leaders of the Jews, the Sadducees, do you believe in God? Yes, I believe in God. All right. Are you obedient to the Father? That's what Jesus exposed to them over and over and over again, right? No. And this is the verdict. This is the verdict. In other words, this is the distinction 
between whether you believe or don't believe. This is the verdict. That people preferred darkness to light because their works were evil. Everyone who does wicked things hates the light. Jesus is the light and does not come towards the light so that his works might not be exposed, right? In other words, they want to sin. They want to continue sinning. They don't want to confront the reality of Christ. They won't accept his mercy, right? Uh, but whoever lives the truth comes to the light so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God, right? And this is what uh, our Catholicism, our Christianity really is all about, that our faith is manifested in our loving, humble obedience. We come to the light. We want to do all things for the praise, honor, and glory of God. In Humble obedience. This is the distinction. This is the manifestation of our belief in Jesus Christ. Uh, and it's the it's the you know know them by their works. We will know that are Christians by their works, by their fruit, right? Uh, and and so this all ties together. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, you know we Catholics understand uh, that we are saved hope and love the greatest of these being love our love being our work the work we do for the lord uh and it's the lord uh who is the light who shines on our work our work the light being shined on is to give him praise honor and glory to god because it's only by grace that we can do any of this <laughs> Let us now ask our Father in heaven to shed his mercy on all of our deeds. The Catholic Church, the Pope, bishops, priests, and religious for our seminary studying for the priesthood. For those discerning religious life, for mothers, fathers, husbands, wives, sons, daughters, brothers, sisters, that all of us in our vocation may desire to do all things in humble obedience, but a praise, honor, and glory of God to always be in the light uh, to do uh, offer up all things, an atonement and reparation our sins and all the sins against the sacred heart of Jesus and the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And always we pray for charity and chastity in our vocations. We pray to the Lord. And at the end of all the visions against the sanctity of life, marriage, and family, and for the least of Christ's brethren, the unborn, the sick, the thirsty, the naked, the homeless, the hungry, the imprisoned, for all those suffering any trial or tribulation, whether it be physical or spiritual, that they may find comfort in Jesus as we reach out to them in spiritual and corporal works of mercy, we pray to the Lord. And for the particular intentions of this Mass, for your intentions, my intentions, the intentions we hold in our hearts for all the people we said we would pray for, including those we may forget to pray for, for the intentions of those who pray for us and encourage us and support us each and every day. And for the soul in purgatory, especially those that have no one to pray for them. In particular, our deceased ones and family members, we pray to the Lord. We ask for this. We ask for all good things, the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the martyrs and saints in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Bless you, Lord, Lord of all creation. Through this we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands. Become for us the bread of life.
Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we ever see the wine we offer you, for the divine work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be accepted to God, the Almighty Father. O oh God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice of the partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks, Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, the Lord you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Grant the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising to life, uh, uh, and, and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. Even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of a glorious day acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew falls, that they may become for us the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and that willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out of you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith save us savior of the world for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free therefore as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you lord the bread of life and the child of salvation giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray that partake of the body and blood of christ may be gathered into one by the holy spirit remember lord your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, and with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, May merit to be co heirs to eternal life. May praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy may be always free from sin and saved from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her purity in accord with your will, live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I have chosen you from the world, says the Lord, and have appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those who have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from more ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Say, my good angel, the us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke and humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the root of souls. Amen. Immaculate Mary, your praises we sing. You reign now in splendor with Jesus our King. Ave, 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 Maria, Ave, Ave, Maria. Have a blessed day, everybody. Go out to the world and give them heaven.